Welcome to the show. I'm Elric and you're here at Tech of Tomorrow where we bring you all the tech all the time. Now, recently we brought you a video explaining why you'd want to buy an AMD or Intel CPU. And many of the comments are in there were like, hey man, bring me a video of Nvidia versus AMD as far as video cards goes. So let's start off with entry level video cards. 640 is pretty much the entry level card that you're going to get for any type of gaming that's from Nvidia and it does not contain PhysX. PhysX is one thing that sets Nvidia apart from the pack. Now, some people think that with an AMD card, you cannot use PhysX at all. They're like, no, I can't use it, man. But that's entirely untrue. Let's just knock that rumor right out of the ballpark right now. Sound effects of the cameraman. Oh, ah, there you go. Out of the park. That's complete bullshit. You can definitely use PhysX on an AMD card. We're going to have a link in the description below where you can go and download the driver. Now, here's the difference. Advanced PhysX is done on an NVIDIA card, and it's done via chip that's on their card. When you download the driver and you're using PhysX, you're using it off your CPU. This is the main difference that sets the cards apart in any situation that has to do with gaming. But if you're talking about just buying an entry-level card, it doesn't really matter if it's AMD or NVIDIA due to the fact that the entry-level cards from NVIDIA do not have PhysX on them at all. So if you're buying one of those cards, like the sub $100, it's not going to really matter what you buy if you're just you know buying that card or video card. There's plenty of people who go, I just want a video card. I hardly game. I just want something that works. Well, if that's your case, then you're not going to really worry about it anyways. Now, when you jump up the chain, the cards are all getting pretty similar. You guys can see the wars have been going on. These guys leapfrog each other constantly. As we move up the chain though, in gaming, the true things that set these cards apart are having the onboard PhysX, as far as gaming goes. Now, if you're using the cards for like things like rendering in Photoshop and stuff like that, if you're talking about, you know, pretty much, you know, an apple to apple comparison between prices of cards, there's not that great of a difference. Now, NVIDIA does have a lot of cool stuff, though. They have their CUDA and all their stuff that they have inside of their cards that's more geared for a person who's doing, like, making a 3D game. You can see there's lots of stuff out there right now where it's like, okay, NVIDIA's name on it, and they've made it. Not saying that the people at AMD don't have that as well. They do. They're just not as entrenched in the pits, just like with gaming. You'll see there's much more games that come up with a thing meant to be played on NVIDIA than you're going to get ones that are said meant to be played on AMD. This is because NVIDIA has their foothold in a much broader market. NVIDIA has been doing this a long time. Once they bought up 3D Effects, which was the great gaming company of the past, once they gobbled them up, they've been very competitive. In the very beginning, I hardly looked at ATI cards, which is what AMD is actually. AMD bought ATI. If you guys don't know that and you're really new to the game, but ATI became AMD in the last few years. But traditionally, it was ATI versus NVIDIA. I know I'm straying a little bit from the points here, but some people don't know this information. They might prefer to have it. So if you're doing like Photoshop and stuff like that, and you're going to be doing 3D type work and those type of things, you might want to consider more looking towards an NVIDIA card. Now, if you're going to be strictly doing that stuff, you can buy yourself a Quadro card, which is made by NVIDIA, or a Fire GL card, which is made by AMD. But that's a totally different market, totally different budget, and not what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about the difference between desktop, NVIDIA, and AMD, and why you would choose one or the other to put in your system. Now, there are a couple of things that I have to say that I'm not really totally, you know, thrilled with about NVIDIA. For one thing, with their green light program, you are not allowed to overvolt the card, do anything crazy like that, or you will void the warranty. Now, that means that the only stuff that you can get is through very little changing of the card, you know, through your cooling and stuff, and you'll get your boost. That's the only way to get the overclocking on a NVIDIA card, okay? The second point, two gigabytes. Two gigabytes. Mm. I don't know. With two gigabytes of memory, you start doing multi-monitor, you start lagging out. And in some games, I mean, seriously, two gigabytes? Go look at Max Payne 3. You have two gigabytes, you can barely enable the shit in the game. It's just like, nah. So three gigabytes, which is most of the high-end cards from AMD, 
I think that in that aspect is a very good characteristic. If you're going to do multi monitors, you know, you're going to want to go with probably an AMD card because the AMD card, a multi monitor has three gigabytes. It's going to perform much better right outside of the box. If you don't believe me, go look at all the videos out there. Don't hate on the channel. Don't hate on me. It's just the fact two gigabytes will not power three monitors as well as three gigabytes. It's just a fact of the matter. Plus, in my personal experience, even though I use NVIDIA cards a lot, when it came time for me to set up multi-monitor technology, I honestly thought that iFinity was easier to set up and use than what they had from their 3D. The 3D surround to me when I was hooking it up and all that stuff, I had a lot more difficulty hooking it up. I mean, I did get it hooked up and admittedly I was using 3D glasses, so it was probably a little bit, you know, more of a difficult situation. But for me, using the other one was just simpler. And for a lot of people, they're not going to use 3D glasses. They just want three monitors to be able to watch their stuff on and do it. So that's just something to take in consideration. Three gigabytes will get you better overall stuff because you can boost the games up versus two gigabytes. Just a fact. Now, the big thing a lot of people are going to say, though, is like, oh, my God, does that really matter that much? You can still do it. Yeah, that's why I use two cards when I use NVIDIA. I double those things up. I put them in SLI, and then I have much better you know, gameplay with that. So when I'm using multi-technology from NVIDIA, I SLI those bad boys. And there's also something to be said here. You can get an AMD high-end card, 7970, with six gigabytes. You can they have six gigabyte versions. Now the six gigabyte version, a lot of people out there were like, oh wow, you know, this card's gonna be so much faster, it's got six gigabytes. <laughs> nope, you'd be wrong. But if you're running multi-monitor technology and you've got three monitors out there, yeah! fuck yeah, baby, that card kicks ass. I did a lot of videos in the past. I'll probably do some more again with that and set that shit up because it's really cool. But when you're using three monitors, Having six gigabytes of memory really matters. And it makes the performance level much more when you're using those giant, you know, huge, huge display rates. I forget, it was like 5460 by something. It was just humongous frame rates when I was using those things. <coughs> Froggy getting my throat. <coughs> Must drink water. Hey, I'm only human. What can I say? So, anyways... Basically, between the two cards, if you're just a standard gamer, you do nothing else but game. It's really just going to come down to how important is having that advanced physics to you. At the end of the day, you're like, man, I really want that advanced physics. Because if you do, then you don't want an AMD card. That's just, you know, they don't have it. When you're using the physics, even though you can download the driver and use it, it's not the same experience you know, using your CPU as it is using NVIDIA's because NVIDIA is called Advanced Physx for a reason. When they went out and they bought the company that made the technology and they integrated it into their card, it was a sly and bad bold move that kind of screwed a lot of people in the industry around because, well, check it out, only NVIDIA has it. But if that doesn't matter to you and you think, ah, that's just a few little here things here and there, then you probably are going to want to consider an AMD card. Now, if you do more than gaming, once again, I just want to integrate. If you do more than gaming, especially if you're going to be doing 3D modeling, 3D rendering, doing all that kind of stuff, NVIDIA Car once again comes back and kicks butt. So it's just really a variance of what you're doing. There aren't a bunch of special programs, you know, inside of AMD software. They don't have a bunch of stuff in there and their card and their technology and you read through. They have a lot of stuff that's geared for gaming, video, multimedia experience, but it's not geared towards making 3D animation. It's not geared for making movies, it's just not that way. Where NVIDIA card, it has all that technology inside of the card. So that's just something to think about. You know, if you're somebody who you're at home, you're gonna be doing a lot of video editing, you're possibly gonna do some 3D modeling, all that type of stuff, you're probably gonna to wanna to more consider to get yourself an NVIDIA card and if you want superpower, just get two of those bad boys. Now, here's where I can reiterate some other stuff. EVGA does have cards that they make that have more than two gigabytes. I've been thinking about going over there and bugging the hell out of that guy, Joe, and saying, come on, man, give me a card. But, you know, they gave me some stuff, you know, the Red Dawn, they kicked me down really big on that one. Uh, you know, the two cards, the you know, board. So I you know, didn't want to go back and beg, but I'd be like, hey, man, come on. Because I'd really like to get a hold of one of those cards. Because if I could get one of their models that had three gigabytes, it would eliminate the bottleneck that I see between these cards a lot. I feel that NVIDIA, one of the first things they should do right now 
is come out with a fracking three gigabyte card for everybody. So listen up, Asus, MSI, Zotac, whoever you guys are out there who are playing this game, come the frack on, make a three gigabyte card and get it out to the market. Why are you letting be EVGA be the only game in town, man? No offense to you guys at EVGA, but I'm just saying. So those are just some points. To me, this is a very, very delicate ground. I don't feel that either card totally topples the other. And if there was that card, they wouldn't be both be in business. There's a reason they're both doing business because they both do have a very good product. So anyways, folks, I hope that helps. Like I said, I feel this is really, you know, treacherous ground. I don't want to piss any fans off of anything. You know what I mean? I'm always welcome to hear your constructive criticism. I'm always down for that. If you leave comments like, oh, screw you, you're an idiot, screw you, I'm going to delete it, probably ban you because I just don't want to deal with it anymore. But if you want to leave a constructive criticism comment explaining why in different ways down below so other people can read them, I totally love you guys. You're my online family, and I want to hear what all you guys have to say. Like usual, I hope you guys like this video. Give me a little internet hug. Hit that like button, and I hope you subscribe because we always have cool stuff going on here. And I love you because you're part of my online family. See you guys later here on Tech of Tomorrow.